The big question is, can I film this video before I run out of battery? Hi guys, it's Vanessa. The only videos I've been making lately are wrap-ups because they kind of keep me on track and make sure that I come back to this channel every five or so books that I read. And I think this is just going to be the way of life until I graduate at the end of April. I feel like I really haven't been there for you guys lately, so I'm really, really sorry. Hopefully April will come soon. But let's just talk about the things that I've been reading lately. Let's do another wrap-up. The majority of these are still audiobooks, which is the primary way I've been consuming things. I really have not been sitting down and opening books lately. The only time I really have been doing that is if I'm reading picture books for my multicultural lit class or graphic memoirs and graphic novels. So those are the only two things that I'm going to mention today that I actually physically read. And then I'll talk about all the audiobooks that I've been listening to. So I'll talk really quickly about Jingle Dancer and this is by Cynthia Leitick Smith and it's illustrated by Cornelius Van Wright and Ying Hua Hu. This book is so great. I'm like really happy that I read it. It's a picture book that follows this young girl named Jenna. She is part of the Muscogee slash Creek Nation and we're following her as she's about to take on her first time as a jingle dancer and it's a dance that they do that is really about healing and praying and they do it by wearing these dresses that have jingles on them so when they're dancing they make sense. And it's her meeting up with lots of different women in her life and asking them if she could borrow jingles from them that she could wear for her jingle dance. It's just really lovely because you get to see so many smiles in this book and it's really a celebration of the dance. I also really loved how all of the women in the story are very different. It's like people who are actually relatives and then people who are kind of like family friends and some of them may, you know, be stay-at-home moms or grandmothers who have retired and others are like lawyers and some just bought these new houses and so you get to see them in a variety of occupation and housing that I think is really great to portray about Native Americans. It's great to see a contemporary look at someone like Jenna who is taking on this new responsibility and seeing just how happy and loving and kind they all are to each other. I just really really enjoyed this book for my multicultural lit class. I also really enjoyed the watercolor look of it. I definitely would recommend it if your library has it just pick it up and read it. It's a really short read and if you're looking for some Native American literature in your life I think this is a great great opportunity to read some. The next thing that I'll talk about is the graphic memoir and I read The Best we could do by Thi Bui. And this is a graphic memoir that traces her family in Vietnam while Vietnam was taken over by the French and it was Indochina into them expelling the French, the Vietnam War happening, also kind of like the differences between the rich and the poor in Vietnam, and especially her mom and dad had opposite upbringings. And it's really fascinating to kind of see that aspect of growing up in Vietnam. The narrative is really tied to the birth of the author slash illustrator's first child. Looking at parenting in this way, trying to reframe the way that she was parented by both her parents, looking through kind of their failures and disappointments in their lives. That's what I kind of gathered from reading this. I don't know if it was as successful as I wanted it to be because I'd heard so many great things about this graphic memoir and I just felt like the narrative message wasn't all there for me. And I think that's why it took me so long to finish this, but I did really like the, the look at Vietnam and I also really liked the art too. It's mostly black and white but there's lots of red in it as well. So let's move on to audiobooks and all the audiobooks that I've been consuming lately. The first one I'll talk about is Bachelor Nation by Amy Kaufman. This I was so freaking excited about ever since I heard that it was coming out probably like 10 months before that. Mostly because I feel like there hasn't been like a book that talks about The Bachelor in that all-encompassing way that this book is attempting to do. And it really looks at the history of The Bachelor and kind of like the way that it came to fruition from Mike Fleiss's brain. It also talks about lots of behind the scenes information as to how producers work. It also had lots of interviews with people who were contestants. And Amy Kaufman is a journalist for the LA Times, so I think she took that aspect of it very seriously. And she was journalistic and authoritative and legit, so it wasn't a gossipy book 
book. It wasn't a book that was just like trying to be Us Weekly or People Magazine. It was a book that was attempting to understand the phenomenon that is The Bachelor and why so many people like it. For me, it was just fascinating to hear all those things. And I think another thing that makes this book really great is Amy Kaufman and her narrative style. I listened to this on audiobook and she narrated it herself. She is very snarky. She is very honest and she is funny too, I think. So I really liked her delivery in the audiobook. I felt like I was understood as a fan because she is a fan as well. And if you are Bachelor trash with me, then I would recommend that you check out this book. The next thing that I listened to on audiobook was Stranger by Jorge Ramos. And this is a book about Jorge Ramos looking at the immigrant experience and how that has been in the past. He's lived here for 35 years to how it is now with Donald Trump as our president. He is really like a staple of Spanish language television. I grew up watching him. I just feel like a connection to him personally as a journalist and like how he stands up for immigrants. I really liked in this book how he talked about the immigrant experience because I think he actually vocalized a lot of thoughts that I have had abstractly in my head and that I bet my father has had abstractly in his head. One example of that is him talking about leaving his home country and how you miss it when you leave it, but the moment that you leave it, it is already changing. Jorge Ramos also talks about kind of the way that immigrants are being talked about now and in probably the past 5-10 years. The United States and Americans in general have this very cyclical relationship with foreigners and how they view foreigners. At other points in time it could have been Irish Americans, Asian Americans, and now it is Latino Americans. I will say that there were parts of this book that really went way off talking about stats and facts and polls and research. They all do add on to his argument, which I think is valid, but I think in the quick succession that he delivers a lot of this data, it kind of numbs your brain and you kind of stop paying attention to the numbers. And I think that they could have been better interwoven into what he was talking about, his arguments, instead of just being like, full stop, let me tell you 10 different facts. I also think this book should have ended when this book ended, because at the end of this book, there's dispatches slash notes from his growing up and moving here and I don't think that they really fit with the book and the whole point of the book of being a stranger in this country and they kind of become stories about his family which are interesting but I just feel like they didn't really fit as an addendum to the book and they didn't go together very well. I, I skipped some of them because I didn't feel like they were adding to what I came to the book for. Next, let's talk about The Poet X. You know how in my last video I talked about how verse novels are not for me? This is the verse novel that is for me. And I think I just really loved it because the author narrated it herself. And I also felt that this verse novel got me to understand all the characters, the main character, Siomara, as well as her family and her schoolmates and her romantic interests. I felt like I understood all of them so well in a way that I didn't understand the people in Inside Out and Back Again that I talked about in my last video. I just love the delivery of it, the slam style of it, because she is kind of like a slam poet. That feeling really came through in the story. So this is mostly about the main character, Siomara, wanting to kind of shed the religious, not indoctrination, but like the religious focus that her family has. Her mother is very religious and wants her to attend church with her and all these things, communion, etc. And Siomara is not really as interested and has a hard time understanding the presence that religion has in her life. She also thinks about this in, in ways of about gender and culture and the way that she is treated versus her brother in her household and kind of the expectations that her mother and father have for her versus her brother. I really thought this book was refreshing and bold and different and I would recommend it for that. It has such great representation I think and I could I could hear myself in the story at times when it came to those thoughts about how boys and girls are raised in Latinx families and just kind of like how religion sometimes seeps in into your individuality and what you want to be for yourself. That's also something that I have I felt growing up a little bit. There are some parts of this book that are a little bit predictable, especially the climax scene. I didn't feel like it was detrimental to the full story and I think the rest of it is so well done that I could excuse a little bit of the predictability because I just love the rest of it so much. And last but not least, I will talk about my first five-star read of 2018 which is really exciting and this is A False Report by T. Christian Miller and Ken Armstrong. This is a book that in the same vein of Violated and Missoula we follow rape victims search for justice. This book is written by investigative journalists who won a Pulitzer Prize for their original story that 
predated this, you know, full version of this book. And it details in that story and in this book the life of Marie and what happened when she told police that she was raped in her apartment. How sometime later, not a lot of people believed her. The foster families that she had grown up with did not believe her, and the investigators did not believe her, and it caused her to think that maybe it didn't happen. They all thought she was doing it for attention, and so she started thinking, well, maybe I did not get raped, maybe it was a dream. And she actually recanted her story and was later charged with false reporting and had to go to court for these things. Meanwhile, at the same time in this book, we're being told about rapes that are occurring in a serial fashion in the Denver suburbs. How two very smart and thoughtful women investigators from two different suburbs kind of connect the fact that this is one man committing all of these rapes across all of these cities. It's them trying to catch him, then realizing through all of their investigation that somehow this is connected to Marie and she is all the way in Washington state. So that comes to a, a resolution and you get to understand was Marie lying or not. It does look at the psychology of him, like his frame of mind and how he got away with it for so long. It also looks at the history of rape accusations. We as a country have a historical precedent to not believe survivors. And it's, it's just very interesting how legal precedent has led to the way that we see and stigmatize rape victims today because the people who are making these laws were not representative of our country and did not understand rape for the violence that it is and for the crime that it is. There's really great reporting here, I think, because I think the authors really balance trying to keep you engaged and engrossed in the story while keeping it very respectful towards the victims and thoughtful towards their experiences and having them have a say in how their story is told. And also I really valued the author's notes at the end when the two male authors are discussing the gender biases here and how they kind of tried to make sure that they were telling a story that was correct and honest. So I, I really, really, really love this book. I listened to it on audiobook. I was just so into it that I was listening to it at every moment that I had the chance. If you liked Miss Ula or if you're interested in stories about rape victims and how they found justice, then I would definitely recommend this book. And if you like really great nonfiction reporting, I would also recommend this book. And overall, a, a pretty phenomenal book that will probably make it to my top end of the year list. And that is it for me. My battery did end up lasting the whole video, so that's good. Um, and I hope to see you soon probably for my next wrap up, but we'll see. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!